What's going on guys? Welcome back to the TCG Empire YouTube channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at Charizard EX, specifically played by Tord this past weekend at EUIC. He was able to win his fifth Intercontinental Championship title, and this came to being a first place at EUIC after placing second last year. So seeing him redeem another EUIC win is great, and he did it with Charizard EX. So Charizard EX, uh, it's great post-rotation. This list is a bit weird, but we will get into some explanations. But starting things off, we have Charizard EX. Charizard EX, Infernal Rain, when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may search your deck for up to three basic fire energy and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like, and then shuffle your deck. And then Burning Darkness 180 plus, you do an extra 30 damage for each prize card your opponent has taken. So this card really has early damage that really isn't too relevant, but it can set up two shots. But it punishes your opponent for actually playing the game and promoting their board state and taking prizes on their side. You just turn into a madman that can hit a lot of damage. You cap out at 330 damage if your opponent is at one prize card and you don't have any damage modifiers, but we do play some so we will talk about it. You do have 330 HP as well, so your opponent is going to have a rough time dealing with that. Now, the big distinction with this list is that some people don't know whether to run Charizard Pidgeot or Charizard Babarel. And Tord said, you know what, I'm going to run both. So we do have a 1-1 one, one line of Babarel. Babarel, Industrious Incisors. Once during your turn, you may draw onto you have five cards in your hand. You never use it for Tail Smash, but Industrious Incisors is great for late game Ionos, where you've taken a lot of prize cards or maybe... You know your opponent decides to ko your pidgeot you still have something that can draw you back cards and set up the game later on so there is the barrel and then we do have a 2-2 line of pidgeot ex using that quick search ability once during your turn you may search your deck for a card put it into your hand and then you shuffle your deck there's no drawbacks you get to search for any card it does have 280 hp so it is a big factor in being ko'd by things like Radiant Charizard with a Defiance Band, um, or using the new A-Spec Belt, Max Belt. Um, you also run into some issues with Giratina, as they can take a KO. And with being weak to Lightning, it definitely deals with Iron Hands. Sadly, in a bad way, so your opponent can take three prizes. So just be weary of that. Depending on the matchup, you might not want to get Pidgeot out, which is why the barrel is great. You are playing Radiant Charizard. Kind of works well with the essence of what Charizard EX does. Excited Heart, this Pokemon's attack costs one colorless less for each prize card your opponent has taken. So in the end game, this can attack for a single fire energy for 250 damage. A great closer, depending on what you're going up against. And we saw that actually win uh, toward the tournament this weekend. He was able to get the Radiant Charizard out and take a one prize knockout. And his opponent wasn't able to retaliate. And... Charizard, even though it can't attack the next turn, set up for the game. So, definitely was huge. Now, some of the inclusions we're playing. We do have one Luminion V, which does allow you to search for a supporter. We do have one Rotom, which has the instant charge ability. Once during your turn, you can draw three cards, and if you use this ability, your turn ends. Now, the thing that Tord decided to play in this deck was Cleffa, 30 HP one. Has free retreat as well, so normally with Cleffa... Um, you don't really see many decks playing it, if any, but Tord decided to use it for that grasping draw attack. This attack cost means that it costs zero energy. So if you start with Cleffa on turn two, you draw cards until you have seven in your hand. So it's effectively better than using something like Rotom. It's not a two prize liability. It's only one prize. It doesn't cost energy and it just works out great. You can dwindle your hand and then use Cleffa and go from there. So it can really help you to establish a board. We are playing Prime Catcher as the A-Spec instead of Max Belt. Prime Catcher just works out better in what you are trying to maneuver. Um, sometimes you don't want to play a lot of the mirrors in a way where you're going to take instant knockouts. You want to be able to spread damage around just so that way you can take cleanups later with one prizers, but also you're able to benefit the most off of being able to disrupt things like control and things like that. So... Prime Catcher is an inclusion. Now, Tord built this list to deal with control in a great way. So, on top of the Prime Catcher, we actually do have two Professor Turo scenario. You put one of your Pokemon in play back into your hand and you discard all of the other cards, which sucks sometimes to get rid of the energy, but you do have Super Odd 
And then we also do have a Team Meals cheer, which can shuffle back in Pokemon as well as trainers, or I'm sorry, supporters. So this means that you can use something like two Turo and then shuffle them back in with Team Meals cheer. And that mixed with Prime Catcher, mixed with uh, Boss's Orders, really should help you in the control matchup. Lock Snorlax really shouldn't be giving you a hard time. So on top of that, we do have access to Roxanne, just so that way if your opponent takes prizes, you can punish them. And you also get to build a bigger hand size while putting your opponent down to two cards. And we have access to Iono as well, which again, certifies as the same thing, but it gives you some extra draw. And maybe if you have clunky hands, you can put them to the bottom of your deck. But overall, this deck really is a ton of fun to play. I can definitely see why Tord had some major success with it. I don't think that there's really anything that you can change in the list. I mean, everything is solid. Charizard as an engine is just super strong. So I think that's pretty much it for the deck profile. Um, as always, I will throw the full deck list up on the screen so that way you guys have a full clean view of it. And in the description will also be the copied and pasted list so that way you guys can import it into Pokemon Trading Card Game Live and try the deck out for yourself. Now, I do want to say um, with this deck, kind of takes some time to get used to just because some lines are thinner than others you are only playing three arvin as opposed to four you're still playing the four main cards like four rare candy four ultra ball four poffin but you really have to think about this deck when you're playing it so definitely um try to keep your composure if you get frustrated in the second game i got a little bit frustrated and you will see that but i ended up remaining calm and really thinking my place through and it ended up working out so Again, thank you guys for all of the love and support. You guys have been supporting the channel like crazy. We're already past 1,210 subscribers, I believe. So you guys have been killing it. I really appreciate all the love and support. So you guys could do me a favor if you do enjoy today's video. Smash the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Let me know down below what you think of Charizard EX or what you think of Tord as a Pokemon player. Is he one that you look up to? Is he one that... You don't want to run into at a tournament because you'd be scared for your life with final boss music um but let me know down below again what you guys think but with that being said enjoy the gameplay today and i will catch you guys tomorrow later Alrighty, guys so let's get into playing towards charizard list now the coin flip doesn't necessarily matter unless my opponent forces us to go first then it's a little bit of a tricky situation which they did make us go first so um we do have access to some buddy buddy poffins and some nest balls which are good and we have access to collapsed as well so we can actually use something like rotom providing it's in the deck and then go from there so we're playing against turbo hands so um, not going to be a tricky matchup. Honestly, if we can get Zard set up, it should be a pretty good sweep. Um, but as far as things go, there's not too much setup that I can fully do. So I think what I'm going to do is just dedicate my board towards getting set up. And then we'll have to function with Iono. So we do have Pidgeot in hand, which is great. Now, looking at what's prized, we do unfortunately have Rotom prized. So that's going to cause us some serious issues, providing that we can't get a good supporter going. Um, we do have access to Cleffa on the following turn, which I don't hate. So I think what we'll do here is we'll just go and grab another Charmander. And we'll leave the bench spot open just in case we draw something like the V... Um, the V stone just so that way I can actually get Luminion with a nest ball and go from there. But for right now, I'm okay with getting two Charmanders out just to be safe. Um, this Charmander is most likely going to get KO'd, and then it'll actually allow me to go into Cleffa and go from there, which I don't hate, and then um, providing debatable situations we should be okay my opponent can potentially take four prizes with an iron hands which is a bit scary um so we're just gonna have to hope that we can do our best now my opponent probably gonna swing with Mirad on here take one prize 
and then they have Cleffa. So, depending on how my board is built, um, I can potentially go for something like a a play where I can use Turo and kind of eliminate some prizes on my board. But we're gonna have to see exactly what we do here. So. We'll go into the Cleffa just so that way we do have the ability to potentially set up some more. Um, not much going on and honestly I need to burn some cards in my hand. So as much as I hate it, um, we're going to have to Super Rod just to shuffle the one back in. And then so that way Iron Hands isn't in the active or I'm sorry, on the bench, and this Maradon can't attack. As weird as it is, I'm going to boss up the Iron Hands, and then we'll use that Grasping Draw to draw four. See what we get. So we have Ultra Ball, which means that we can grab Arvin with Luminion. So Luminion will guarantee us a way to get Rare Candy Pidgeot and Rare Candy Charizard, and then we can go from there. Iron Hands does have 230, so it is a little bit tricky, but it's not horrible. My opponent just going to take a single prize. I'm perfectly fine with that because now we are in range to actually take a knockout without having to get the Pidgeot out. And we can actually bench the Luminion and also use Collapse Stadium to get rid of a two prizer in play. So. Um, let's see how I want to do this. I don't think I'm going to need two Charmanders. So what I'm going to do to benefit the most from this. Let's see. I'll Ultra Ball, get rid of a Charmander and a Pidgeot. Or a Pidgey, sorry. Or Pidgeot. Yeah, it is Pidgeot. We're going to grab the Luminion. Go Luminion. We're going to Luminous Sign. This will allow us to grab Arvin. And then we can go Arvin. Arvin will grab the rare candy. And then we can grab the four seal stone. Just so that way we have access to it right now. And we can go nest ball. We'll grab the Pidgey out. And then we'll go four seal stone. Four seal stone for another rare candy. Just in case my opponent decides to... Um, Kind of mess with our board my opponent can boss pidgey which i definitely respect but going for the rare candy play onto the zard right here does allow me to take a ko which is huge my opponent's going to be out of resources and then i can actually put two here and also collapse and get rid of the luminion and then i do have access to turo to get rid of some other things on the board just so my opponent can't take additional prizes so we're just going to go Collapsed, get rid of Luminion, and then now I'm feeling perfectly okay. I could even Super Rod and put back in a Pidgeot and a Pidgey just to ensure that my Rare Candies are effective. But I think right now, honestly, Burning Darkness is fine. Now, my opponent can't do too much. They don't have two grass energy, which means that I don't have to worry about a potential iron leaves. So we're doing pretty good on the sense, and we do have the rare candy to Pidgeot, which means that we can Pidgeot out a boss, which does allow for us to just take a simple KO on an iron hand and go from there. And then we also have the rare candy into the Pidgeot. Or, I'm sorry, Rare Candy and Tazard if we need that as well. So, my opponent getting double Iron Hands out. There is the first one. There is the Iron Bundle. So, my opponent is going to force us to give up a prize, but I'm actually okay with this. Um, as far as what I want to get rid of, honestly, I'm going to get rid of the Cleffa just because it is easy prizes for my opponent. And I'm not worried about that so there's a generator hitting one energy so my opponent's going to take a knockout and then we can limit the bench even more my opponent's going to be at three prizes which is an odd amount meaning even if they iron hands again next turn um they're not going to be doing too much so 
We know that they have the iron hands in their hand. They didn't bench it, which is fine. And we actually hit the Arvin as well, which means that um, if we wanted to, I could grab Prime Catcher, which I don't hate. And Rare Candy. Let's see. I don't think my hand will fully allow it. Let's see. If I Arvin, grab Rare Candy, or I have to grab Prime Catcher. I can't get another Charizard out. But I can access a supporter for turn, but I don't think I fully need to. Um, let me see. Let's think this through. Um, there's no real way that I can do too much. So I think I'll just Arvin to thin the deck, and then we can just grab something like the Defiance Ban. It's not going to be necessary. And then we can also grab for the item. Um, we'll grab Ultra Ball. Uh, I guess we'll grab Candy. Just so that way it ensures next turn that we have access to being able to evolve if we need to. So then we can go Quick Search. Quick Search can grab us that Prime Catcher. Which means that we can pivot into the Pidgeot as it does have free retreat. So we can go an Attachment. Prime Catcher, bring up the hands, bring up the Pidgeot, and then we can retreat. I should have grabbed, actually, I should have for sure grabbed um, Radiant Charizard and attached that fire to it because then it would have mean, meant that no matter what my opponent KO'd, um, I would have a response because I could have this Charmander evolve into a Charizard or a Radiant Charizard, but I still technically have this Charizard, so my board is fine. Just the more optimal play would have definitely been to grab a way to get the Radiant Charizard. So we get Ultra Ball and Charizard EX. My opponent bringing up Maridon. We are down one boss. Um, if my opponent takes two prizes here in any way, then there is that but they are just going to hit for 60 and then providing that we have the boss in hand or in the deck we're fine if we don't we'll grab a Turo and Turo can pick up the Pidgeot so my opponent can't take three prizes and then they're going to be kind of checkmated just because um, there's not going to be much that they can do so first thing we'll do is the Ultra Ball get rid of Rotom and the Defiance Band just check what's in the deck we my opponent concedes so um i guess that was it i mean either way uh with grabbing turo or grabbing something like the boss boss would have won the game turo would have bought another turn but my opponent wouldn't have been able to fully benefit off of it so um i think that pretty much sums up the quick game one let's hop into a game two hopefully get the same type of setup and Hopefully get some more plays that we can actually explain and go in depth of. So that was game one. I'll catch you guys in game two. Alrighty, guys. So let's get into the second game with towards Charizard list. We've had a bit of some unlucky hands, um, but hopefully here we're able to get some good things going. We do start kind of terribly. I will not lie. Um, honestly, my opponent is playing... Future box, so I'm gonna start Manaphy just to push my opponent to take some early prizes. And then we have access to counter catcher, which means if they over bench, we can potentially bring up something and go from there. Um, but I need to rely on an insane top deck right now. Potentially something like Arvin. Arvin would be huge. Even Ultra Ball, because Ultra Ball could get me Luminion. So I wouldn't hate that either. And then I would have the rare candy and the Zard if I could hit a supporter so we have access to ultra ball we have access to arvin we really have anything so um it really just depends on what my opponent ends up doing but i'm just hoping that we can have some good cards for the next two turns all i need is a couple of turns to buy time and then i'll be okay opponent starting out with the two iron crown and as the last round went um hopefully this game goes the same now our hand is nowhere near the same um if we top deck something like coffin that's okay too i don't fully hate that um but we will see so there's a techno radar
Getting hands and Maridon. Okay. So there's two Pokemon in my hand, my opponent's hand right now that are pretty useless, so. Um, he benches them. I don't know if I fully agree with the hands bench, just because if, well, my opponent has to set up anyway. So we get a fire energy. Not going to do too much for us at all. So we're just going to attach pass onto the Radzard. And then next turn, if my opponent ends up just attacking, we're just going to counter capture the hands. Um, my opponent, they could take a knockout. They can use arm press. So really, it just comes down to what we get. We do have access to counter catcher though, meaning that we can potentially bring up another iron hand. Okay, my opponent gets Arvin. My opponent just has the insane hand. No pun intended. But they are only getting one prize, so they are in top tech mode. So I don't hate that. There's the generator. My opponent whiffs on generator, so that's actually huge. So my opponent takes a knockout here. We counter catcher up the other hands. Um, oh, well, they have a way to retreat now, so that's not too good for us. Whatever we bring up, they are going to be able to retreat. So we, we need something to top deck here. So there's the Manaphy gone. My opponent taking a prize. We go into Radzard. We get Rotom. Rotom's not going to do too much for us. Um, let's see. My opponent takes two. Then my opponent can technically take three. Um, I think what we're going to do is bait my opponent into attaching the tool somewhere else. That way I can counter catch her up the other thing and then force them to just kind of go with the flow of things. So we get Cleffa. Not going to do much for us. This hand is not good at all. We're going to have to boss and then counter catcher and then just hope my opponent whiffs. There's the booster energy. There's a research. So my opponent just is getting everything that they want. Um, it's pretty horrible for us. Not going to lie. The only thing we can do is hope that my opponent doesn't find booster and then just counter catcher something. But... This is pretty, pretty rough. Um, there's not a whole lot that we can do. I need something out of this top deck. Otherwise, I'm very screwed. So, there's the Rotom. Luminion. Technically, I could grab Arvin, which isn't horrible does give us access to a V-Star. Um, and then that means that the following turn I can get Pidgeot out, which means I can Iono my opponent to one and just kind of hope it sticks. So, um, we're just going to go for it. See, the issue here, though, is that... Well, actually, I can grab Double Puff, so that's fine. So, we're going to grab Forced... Seal stone, and then we'll also grab Poffin. And we're gonna have a crazy turn right now. Um, well, my opponent just wins, they have boss, so not much that we can do. Just gonna have to hope that they don't have it. I have to go Pidgey, and of course, my Pidgey is prized. My Pidgey is always prized. And then we're going to have to go Star Alchemy. I should have just Ionoed my opponent. There's not. There's no reason to play this out how I did. But here we are. So we're just going to keep this going. Um, technically, I could have grabbed Prime Catcher 2 to force my opponent to have their own. But oh well. I'll grab these two. And then we're just going to go Counter Catcher. Bring up the other hands. And we'll just use instant charge and draw three and hope my opponent doesn't have the tool to retreat. And if they do, then we just lose. If they... Um... Well, okay. Hold on. Correction. 20, 40, 60. My opponent is only hitting 180 on Rotom. If they attach a tool to retreat and attack. So they have to have boss plus a way to retreat. 
and their hand size is huge, but it's not like non-doable. And we do have Rare Candy Zard and Rare Candy Pidgeot in the same hand, which means that um, we are able to technically put my opponent at a disadvantage while KOing their hands, so I don't hate that either. So let's probably go Zard and then Rare Candy into Zard, take a knockout, and then um, just do as much as we can. Oh, interesting. So my opponent just goes Maridon. I mean, that's good for them. I don't think that it's going to do very much. I mean, my opponent technically doesn't get Ionode anymore, but they do potentially suffer. So they whiff on the generator. So this kind of changes how my whole turn is going to flow. Um... Okay, I might be able to win this, actually, with my opponent doing that. Because what I can do... Oh, there's the Iono. That hurts. Well, that hand is garbage, so we're going to have to see what we can do. I love that my opponent can just... Make the best of any situation, no matter what they have. They get to play the game and just absurdly take prizes for no reason. And I have to sit here and play chess with how I'm going to play my next turn. This is great. Technically, if I hit an energy, I can retreat. That way it forces my opponent to have to have the switching out. Super odd. That's not going to do anything. Honestly, the only thing I can do is go here. Get rid of the tool. Hope my opponent doesn't have a way to get one back. Bring up this hands. We're going to have to collapse away the Luminion just to force my opponent to potentially um, find anything else. And uh, instant charge. Let's see what we can do. Prime Catcher, Roxanne. Where was all this stuff? before this does nothing for me the only way it does something is if i hit a rare candy the only thing that my opponent can knock out with crown as well is pidgey so i need to evolve that up as soon as possible there's a lightning energy. Is my opponent just going to pass? Be the most optimal thing for me. Alright. So double super odd. That is not going to do anything for me. I could take a turn to instant charge again. Which is risky. Um, but then again my opponent didn't play anything. So they are in top deck mode technically. So honestly... I may have to just risk it, go instant charge, go from there, there's the instant charge, okay so I get Arvin so I had technically have a way to take a knockout next turn because I can Arvin for rare candy, go from there, okay so there's an Iono, again my opponent just getting rid of our hands, this is not ending how I want it to. I want to be able to play the game, and currently I can't do that. There's a baton. So let's see. If we get our own Iono. <clears throat> and evolve into one of the Charmeleons. There's two energy technically gone. So I need to Ultra Ball first. I need to grab something I'm okay with going to the bottom if I don't hit it. So, hold on. Let's see. Let me see. I gotta think. Okay, if I go Pidgeot, I can Arvin for Rare Candy Pidgeot, draw. 
and then still find a way to set up or so that's fine so we'll go arvin got the candy we already used the four seal stone technically i could grab prime catcher too to take out this iron hands or this crown um then that just gives my opponent the initiative I need to be able to vacuum but i can't vacuum at the same time as doing that this is so stressful so we'll go choice belt rare candy we just need to dump some cards so go here rare candy to the pidgeot bib okay so we had charizard and we hit rare candy so that's huge so we can technically take this out um which i don't hate i just really wish that i had access to vacuum so we'll go charizard so let us rain grab three and then we'll go one one and one Retreat. Quick search. I'm gonna grab the prime catcher now so that way next turn I can prime catcher this hand and then I can Iono my opponent as well. Um, depending on what they do next turn, they can attack, but it's not gonna do enough for them to really do much, so. We just have to hope that we can make this three to six comeback. So there's the first two prizes. It's scary because Crown can attack. Um, if my opponent attacks with Crown, that's 50 to two Pokemon. So then I would be forced to get Turo. Technically, it's not horrible if I do that. We're just going to have to see. Grabbing the Prime Catcher was the best move, though. Because now I can take control of his hands unless my opponent gets another one. And it's a little bit awkward, but it's not horrible. Okay, so there's the second hands. So depending on what my opponent does here, let's see, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. There's no way that my opponent can KO Charizard here. And my opponent just emptied out their hands, so... Now I can play around them having no hand, which is huge. Um, it just comes down to if they top deck a boss or not, and I need to find a way to play around that. So I need to... Um, let's see, what's the best way to do this? So I top deck the Turo, which is huge. That means I can Turo this Rotom, and then also Prime Catcher... Technically, it doesn't matter. Crown would probably be my best bet because then that means that my opponent can't. Yeah, taking out Crown is huge. Because then my opponent can't hands and KO Pidgeot for three prizes. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to Turo. Pick up the Rotom. Prime Catcher. Go for the Crown. Ultra Ball, get rid of Pidgey and Rotom. Grab another Zard. Quick Search. Grab Super Rod. I still have another Turo on the deck, which is huge. Then we'll go Super Rod. <clears throat> Put back Radzard. Two Fire. Nest Ball for the Radzard, so we have an alternate attacker. Because if my opponent takes two prizes on a bib, then this attacks for free. Then we'll go Zard. Accelerate. Put the two here. Then we can go Retreat. Um, 160, 180, 200. Technically, this Zard is the more optimal play just because my opponent can't arm press and take a knockout. So let's go Burning Darkness, 540. Take two prizes. And now my opponent has to find a way 
to take a knockout. Otherwise, we win. And we should have one boss in the deck still. Otherwise, we can just pivot between things. Um, we can even Turo Pidgeot if we need to. So it's just a peak acceleration, which means now we should be able to search for the boss and take a knockout. Go from there. So there's a rare candy. So I'm going to Ultra Ball first just to be safe. Um, we'll get rid of Iono and rare candy. I just need to make sure that the boss is in here. The boss is in there. Great. So we can just grab this. Which means that we can then go Pidgeot, Quick Search. Quick Search can grab us the boss's orders. And despite the really rough start we had, we are able to win this game. We're going to just grab the crown, hit for 540. Take this game. Um, my opponent dwindling their hand greatly hurt them. We were able to kind of play around with that, uh, but that was probably one of the stress, most stressful games I've played. I got a little bit frustrated, but I had to make sure to kind of hold my composure and really think my place through. So uh, I think that pretty much explains how towards Zardless can go, especially into something like um, Turbo Maridon or Turbo Hands that can take extra prizes so quick. It really makes you think on how you want to approach your turns, especially with having a rare candy and stuff. So if you guys did enjoy today's video, do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of Tord winning his fifth Intercontinental Championships. I personally think it's inspiring um, and it's really awesome to see. He seems like a really genuine guy and he deserves the success. So again, if you guys did enjoy today's video, do me a favor, smash the like button. Like I said, subscribe, turn on post notifications. That's pretty much it for today's video. Um, and with that being said, I will catch you in tomorrow's video. Later.